Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Elements video, we'll be taking this photograph and then adding in some northern lights just like that and a reflection down there. Now, if you enjoy this video, make sure you click that like button and also, of course, share with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and if you want to learn a lot more about Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training, and you'll find links for that up there in the upper right-hand corner. Okay, let's get to it. We'll be starting off this video with this photograph, and you'll find a link for this photograph on my description or upper right hand corner up there. You'll find a link for that as well. I want to get rid of that star stick, maybe a couple of other ones in here that we'll just show through and distract from our northern lights. We'll go ahead and we'll fix that. Before I do that, though, let's make a copy of the background. Take this and drag it up to the new layer button, just like that. Hide the original. That way, if I make any mistakes on this, I can always go back to my untouched original copy right there. Just a habit I'm always in. Okay, let's zoom in. Little star trail right there. So we had this one, that one, maybe that one, that one. That's all I really care about in here. We'll fix that with the spot healing brush over here. I have mine set up proximity match, which is fine. A little 40 pixel soft edge brush. And simply just pull right down over that and allow Photoshop Elements to fix that for you. Does a real good job at this kind of a thing, real fast and easy fix. There we are, that's done, it's all taken care of. Okay, let's go back out here, fit screen. We'll be putting the northern lights in behind the building, but in front of the sky, obviously. So I need to separate the sky out from the building, and we'll do that with a new layer. Grab this layer, drag it up to the new layer button right there. That's our background. So we'll just rename this, double click where the name is and type in foreground for that. Now we'll be putting the northern lights in between these two layers. I'll put a new layer right there. So click on the background, then do new layer. The northern lights will be going in this space here. It'll be several layers, but they'll all be between these two layers. Now for the foreground to work, I need to separate out the sky from the foreground. And we'll do that by just by making a layer mask. So let's zoom in. I'll start over here, left-hand side on this. There we are. And using the polygonal lasso tool, which is right down there, set at new. I have feathering set at zero, which is fine for this because this is just sitting on top of itself. So if the edge is a little bit off, you'll be seeing the same picture in behind, and that works out fine. Now with this tool, just click outside, and then you click, and Photoshop Elements connects your clicks with lines. If you need a curve, you just put your dots closer together, your clicks closer together. And just take your time and make a nice little selection here. This is a pretty easy tool to use because you have a lot of control. I can you know, move this around until I find the exact right spot and then click at that spot and Elements fills in those lines for us. Very easy to use tool, especially good for straight edges like this house. Okay, we'll just work around this. Now, there's some openings there in the railing. That's not important unless you happen to have your northern lights falling inside of that area. So I'm going to leave that alone. Hold the space bar down to move your image. You can actually get a little hand here. You can move the image around. And let's just finish off going around the roof. With this tool, take your time and don't click too quickly. If you click too quickly, the selection is going to collapse on itself. It's going to close the selection down and you'll have to start over again, and you don't want to be doing that. So make sure you breathe slowly, take your time, and don't click too fast so you don't get things messed up. But as you can see, really pretty straightforward, pretty easy to use tool in here. And my personal favorite selection tool, just because of the control that you have with this. Okay, spacebar, we're going down the other side of the building here, and then along the top of the fence, which we'll be seeing in just a second, and we'll be all done with this part of this project. Hold the space bar down. There's a little bit of a curve to the roof right here, just a slight curve. So I'm going to put my dots closer together to handle that curve in there. There we go. At this point, this doesn't really matter because there won't be any northern lights over here anyway, but might as well do a nice job 
while we're doing it. Okay, spacebar again. Move that down and then across the top of this railing. I don't need to worry about those because, again, there's no northern lights, but just in case in the future I'm going to work around them like that, I can come back that way if I need to and do a bit more careful selection. Okay, click out here, space bar. Let's pull this straight down. Let go and click just outside. Again, space bar, pull it clear over here to the other side. And then look at the space bar right there. And space bar is find our beginning spot right there. And let go space bar, and there it is. So there's our selection. Brings us back to fill screen. So there it is. So is selecting around the outside and in here. Once that's done, just click on the layer mask button. There's your layer mask. We can see this layer mask now. If I hide that background layer, there it is. So the sky's been masked out. We just have the foreground left. So we'll be putting our northern lights right in on this layer, and they'll come in here behind the house and in front of that. You can just demonstrate that quickly. I'll switch over here to a bright green color. Now I have mine set at only web colors, and then click in the middle of the greens someplace, and you have white, kind of a light green, not quite as light right there. That's the one that you want. It's 99FF99 if you want to actually type that in. Choose OK, and let's grab our paintbrush, and I'll make a pretty good size brush here just to check our layer mask. That's too much. That's pretty good. Let's come into layer one, and be doing this kind of a thing here. So you have the northern lights is in front of the sky and in behind the building. Okay, that's all set to go. Let's just go ahead and undo that brush tool. All right, let's bring this in and begin working on our northern lights right there. For that, we have our green color already. You want to have your background set to black. So click on this little white square here and click on the bottom left hand corner. That's your black. So green in the front black in the back. We'll need to make a special brush for this Northern Lights trick, so let's go to our brushes and click on brush right there. Brings up the panel for your brush selections. Change the default brushes down to calligraphic brushes and the one you want is right there. Near the top it says 20 and has a slight angle to it. Just choose that one. Now I want to have this one a little larger, so I'll change the pixel dimensions here to 60 and opacity at 100. Over here where it says brush settings, click on that. And a couple of settings changes in here where it says fade, set this to 1000. And I'll show you that in just a second. And then hue jitter, put that right about in the middle. You can just type in 50 if you want here, so 50%. And on the angle, you want to have this straight up and down and that's going to be 90 degrees. So there we go, fade at 1000, hue jitter at 50, angle at 90. Now the angle at 90 will always work. Hue jitter at 50 will always work. The fade setting, you may need to change this if your picture is a different size than this picture. So you might have to adjust this up or down depending upon the size of your picture. Okay, let's see what this does for us. If I just pull straight across, you can see a couple of things in here. These little lines, that is the hue jitter happening. That's changing between the foreground and the background. Our foreground, of course, is that green and the background is black. So that's the hue jitter happening in there. Where it kind of fades off at the end over here, that is the fade set at 1000. Now for this picture, if I go over here to the left hand side and pull straight across, the fade at 1000 is just about right to give it out halfway across the picture and that's what you want. So if your picture is larger, you may need a larger setting on that fade to get it halfway across. Let's just undo those two brushes in there. And that sets up our basic brush settings. We can now zoom in a little bit here on the sky, just kind of fill the sky up. That's pretty good. It's a little bit large. You can see here we're just off the edge, just a touch, but that's fine. And I'll scroll up a bit and we'll play around in this area here to get the basic northern lights set up. So back to our brush. The next thing you need to do is to practice the movement on this. Let me do it real slow here. I want just some, right there we go. You want some small ones here and then kind of getting larger as you go over to the right hand side. That's the basic idea. So some little ones here 
and then larger as you go. Now this is a little bit too even in here. I want a little bit more spread out on the right hand side. So little ones and then like that. So just try a few until you get the feeling down for this. So little ones and then a bit more. Once you have the feeling done, then go ahead and do your final. I'll just use the Control Z here to undo those four brush strokes. Let's do one more of these. So there's some little ones. Make sure on the right layer. There we go. Little ones and then a bit bigger. Not too happy with that one. Let's just Control Z and undo that. That's pretty good. So just a few short ones here and some larger waves over there. And that's going to be the basis for the whole thing. So that's our basic setting. Now on this we need to do our upwards smear and we'll be doing that with several layers. First off though I want to soften this down a little bit. It's pretty sharp, pretty distinct. I want to have it kind of softened up. We'll use a blur for that so filter Come down to Blur and Gaussian Blur. I have mine set at 4.0. It just softens that down. So we still have those streaks showing, but they're not really, really solid any longer. And choose OK. Now take that layer one. This is our basic layer. Pull it up here to make a new layer. Here's our first copy. Now on this one, I'm going to be smearing this vertically. And we'll do that with a different filter. Filter, Blur, and then Motion Blur. Now the settings I have on this one, it's set at 90 degrees, so it's straight up and down, very important. And the distance is around 45 to 50 in there somewhere. I'm using 46 on this. Choose OK. Now we're on the Move tool. There it is. And then using the arrow keys, just tap up with the upper arrow key. You see that kind of moves that up. Now if I go too far, you're seeing a line between those. And you see that line, just back it up until the line goes away. Looks like right about there is perfect. Okay, take that layer, make a copy of that layer. And then same thing, filter. Now, if you go here to the very top, it says motion blur. This repeats that last filter setting. Or use the control plus F. It just replays the last filter setting. So go ahead and do that one. Same thing again, the up arrow. And let's pull that one up. Looks like right, right in there. And we'll do this one more time. Same thing, filter, motion blur, arrow up. And find that spot. That looks pretty good there. And just keep on doing this until we have copy five. So here's copy four. And then filter, motion blur, back up again. Right there. And then copy five, filter, motion blur, and one more time. There we go. Okay, that gives us our basic blur setting on this. Now come down to the first layer here and make a new copy of this right there. And that's layer one, copy six, sitting on top. And we're not going to be blurring that when you see it right there. There's that layer kind of poking in there. And then set the blend mode for this layer. Layer one, copy six, set the blend mode to overlay right there. And it just brightens that up. That bottom line brightens that up. And that looks pretty good. Now go to the top layer. Layer 1, copy 5 up here. And set the blend mode on this one to linear dodge add. And that lightens that layer up and changes the color a little bit. And that takes care of the coloration for our northern lights. Okay, the next thing we need to do is we'll be putting in a perspective change on this. And for that, I want to merge all these together into one layer. But I want to do that so I can save these layers in case I want to go back and redo this at this point. So a couple of things in here. First off, hide your foreground and your background. So all we see is just the northern lights. Make sure you're on that top layer up there. And then hold down the Control, Shift, Alt, and then tap the E key. And it should give you just one layer. Sometimes it'll give you two if you do that. If you see layer two and layer three, just delete layer three. We don't need that. Layer two is the one that you want right there. Okay, so there's our copy. This is just a merge of all these layers. You can now hide these layers. 
And if you're working in Photoshop Elements 15 or Photoshop Elements 2018, you can put all of these into a layer group just to get them out of the way. Just select the top layer one, copy five, come down to layer one, hold the shift key, and select all of those, click on your layer group. It just puts those into a group and gets those out of the way. This kind of cleans things up. You're no longer going to be using those. You can hide that and just to clean up. Now, if, if you're not working in 15 or 2018, just leave them as they are. Just make sure they're all hidden and you're fine. Let's bring our foreground and background back in again. There it is. This is all on one layer now making it easy to work. You can see we have these kind of folds happening in here. And there's a, a left side and a right side. Left side, right side, left side, right side. We'll be using those. I want to lighten up the right side of these in here. And we'll do that with a new layer above this there. Click on your new layer button. There it is. Put the colors back to their defaults. So click on the little icon right down there and then click on the reverse so that white is in your foreground. Go up here to the paintbrush. Set this back to the default brushes. And we now want just a nice soft brush in here. So I'll scroll down to our soft brushes. There we go. Let's go to the 200. And then I'll bring the size down to oh, about 150. So there's our brush size. Now it's about the right size for this one and this one. I'm not going to worry about that. So I want that one and that one. And then we'll bring our brush size down a little bit to do a couple of things in here as well. So layer three right there. And white soft edge, 150. And just pull straight down just like that and just like that right on top of those two sides. Let's bring our brush down to about 75 I think should work on this one. That's good. Okay, straight down right there. And I think that's probably going to be okay. I'm going to come down half again on this and maybe bring it down to about 30. Fix. And that's pretty good. So there we go. Little soft edges in here. Let's now change this layer to a different blend mode here. You want to change this to the overlay blend mode. Just kind of overlays it like that. So it lightens up that one side. Now we have this kind of glow happening right here. You want to get rid of that glow effect in there. If I right click on this, where it says layer three, right click on that and create clipping mask. That puts this just on that one layer and nothing else. That gets rid of that glow for us. Now we can soften this down a bit. Bring your opacity about halfway down. And that just lightens up that edge. So there you go. That's how you can handle that and just kind of lighten up your edge a little bit in there. I think I want those a little bit brighter. So let's just adjust our opacity up a little bit here. That brightens those up. That's pretty good. Maybe about 74, 75 in there. Just kind of nice, bright, gives you a nice fold effect on that. Okay, that takes care of the basic lighting. Now we need to come in and begin working on our perspective for this. Now for the perspective I want to have these two layers merged together. So again let's hide the foreground and background so we just have just the northern light showing up here to the layer 3. Same trick again hold down the control shift alt and then hit that E key. There we go did it right that time just the one new layer. Okay let's go ahead and hide layer 2 and 3. We now have just this layer which combines the Northern Lights ribbon and the highlights together. Let's show that foreground background and there it is. Now we can put our perspective on this thing. For the perspective we'll go up here to image transform and perspective right there. Now with perspective you can grab a corner upper left hand corner and pull it in like that. And so you see the little numbers up there. Pull it in until that says just about 20. It doesn't have to be exact, but about 20. So that's 20.4 and that's fine. That's our perspective on this. Choose OK. So we're getting there. Let's now move this over to the left a little bit. Let's see where the, our left edge is. There's the left edge. There's a the right edge. So see the left edge. Pull it over near the left side. Grab the right side here and just stretch this out so it's almost across the whole picture right about like that. That's pretty good. Choose OK. 
And then let's pull the top up a bit to stretch that out. This here our top of our frame is. Okay, that's pretty good. So it's kind of fitting in that top space right there. We can now pull this down. It goes in behind the building, as you can see there. And we can now rotate this around. Click the bottom right-hand side. You can then come just outside. Notice how the cursor here changes to a straight in and out, and it changes like a curve thing. At that point, pull this up around. You want it to be about, about a 10 degree, you know, negative 10 degree. Doesn't need to be exact, but about that. That's negative 10.12. That's pretty good. And let's bring it in so it just kind of covers just a little bit in over the horizon down there. Now, remember that we didn't do any masking in here in behind the railing. So if I put it in behind the railing, the railing kind of shows like that. At this point, you can fix that. If you want that effect in behind the railing, all you have to do for that is zoom in. There we are, zoom in pretty tight. Go up to the layer mask for that layer. It's our top one here, foreground, layer mask. Use the polygonal lasso tool. And let's just make a selection right in here. Like that. Change this to add, and let's do one for this next hole. There we go. And then one more for the last hole down here. Now white shows, shows the image. Black hides the image. So change your foreground background to black. Grab the paintbrush. And then on the layer mask of that top layer, just paint black in there. And that takes care of that. Okay, let's go ahead and let's just undo all of that stuff and deselect. I'm going to be setting this up so that we're not at that position. So we're not down there. Layer four, there we go. And put it right about in here. I think I'm going to rotate this a bit more. Just click on a corner and come just outside and rotate that. I think a bit more of a rotation in there is nice. So I want it coming up into this part of the sky up here. Okay, that's pretty good. I think we can do a little bit better though on this. This is the artistic part and this will change depending upon the actual look that you end up with on the ribbon effect. It'll be you know, a little different each time. I kind of like that positioning in there. Maybe a little more squeezing on the top. We can do that again. Let's just choose OK. Go up here to Image, Transform, Perspective, and I'll squeeze the top in a little bit more. Just a little more angle there. And choose OK. All right, that's pretty good. I like that positioning. Let's now put in a bit of variation on the top up in here. It's too solid along that top line. We need to fix that. So I'll zoom in a bit. Okay, we can now see the whole top section. That's fine. I want to have it really fading out on the left-hand side and then a little more in here and a little less over there. We can fix that by using a new layer mask on this. Come down and change the color here so the foreground is black. And we're on our soft edge, of course. So let's set the size to 100. Bring the opacity way down to about 30. Looks pretty good. And then go up here, make a new layer mask on layer four. There it is. Now, black hides and white shows. If I make a, a black streak here, it actually comes in and hides part of that. Let's just undo that one. Now, I want it fading off at the edge. Let's go to our brush settings and let's set the fade here at 15. So a pretty fast fade. So now it just kind of fades off at the end. Okay, we're all set. I can now come in and begin to just paint down from the top like that and add a bit more variation up here on the top just kind of hide some of that top stuff and it takes several passes like this just kind of come in and just do it several times to get the shape that you want scroll up just a little bit now I just want to have some variation now on the top up here so it kind of it fades off up into the sky that's pretty good a little darkening right in there. And let's bring down the right hand side quite a bit. Maybe a little bit up in here to break up that side there just a little bit. 
fades that out. Okay, there we go. It got, adds our nice little streakiness. It's still a little bit even across the top, so let's just pull this down a bit here and break up some of that evenness. A bit more random across the top. This is where the artistic part comes in. Okay, looks good. Now if you're a little unsure about this particular step, it's okay because it's on the layer mask, you can always redo it. If you right click, you can delete your layer mask and you're right back to there again. Let's just undo that, delete layer mask. Okay, so that's good for the top part. Now, let's add in a secondary line in behind here. So take this layer and make a new layer out of that. There we go, new layer. Come down to the bottom of these two and then using the cursor keys, let's just bring this down a bit. Like that, kind of so you see that secondary ribbon happening in there. That's pretty good. And I think I'll squeeze the left hand side up a little bit on this one. So here's the bounding box. Go back up to perspective, transform perspective, and then pull this side up. And I'll pull that up so that the bottom edges are pretty close in there. And what that does is it gives us a different shape on that bottom. And you can just you know play around with this to get just where you want. Also notice as I do this, we have an overlapping in behind there, but we'll fix that in just a second. But I think right about here is pretty nice. Choose OK. So there's a secondary bit happening. Now, I don't want to have this overlapping in here. I just want it mostly at the bottom part. So we'll do that by going down here to the layer mask. This is our in-behind layer. Back to the black paintbrush. And then this just come in and do some more of this in-behind here just to soften that down. So we're not getting too much of an overlap happening in there. If you need to at this point, you can bring your opacity up about halfway and make it go a little bit faster. So I'm only doing it on the one it's in behind on this just so that we're not seeing too much of an overlap in there. And it's a bit much right here, a bit bright. So I'm going to pull up here and just kind of get rid of that little bit right in there. Okay, looks pretty good. Let's go back to our full size view here. Fit on screen. So there's the nice northern lights happening. Now I want to have this as a reflection as well down below here. And I think I'll make it just a little bit taller on that and our top layer. She's okay. Top of the lights a little bit taller on the top. So you can adjust this to get just the position you want on that. Okay, looks pretty good. So for our reflection, I want to have all of this into a group or merge together. I like a group on this one. Now you don't have to do this. You can just copy both of these if you're not working in version 15 or 2018. Just hold the shift key down, click on your second layer, and then make a copy of those two layers. You want to use those together. I'm just going to do this as a group. So again, hold the shift key down, put that into a group right there. So our group two. And now copy this group or copy those two layers either way. There we go. So here's our copy. Now with the copy, pull the copy above your foreground. If you're working without a group, Put your two layers above, keep them locked together so you're working with them together. And then image, rotate, and flip layer vertical. It just inverts the whole thing. Now pull that straight down so it's in the bottom like this. Now you don't want these touching, you want them down just a little bit, but you want it straight up and down, not off to a side. So pull it straight down and about in here. Looks pretty good. We need to bring our opacity down, obviously, on this. So bring it down to about 30, so you know, pretty small. And I want to change the effect a little bit in here. So let's change the blend mode to linear dodge add. Just makes it a bit brighter, kind of more interesting in here. Now, the building is going to be casting a shadow in here, so you wouldn't be seeing any northern lights in here. You'd only be seeing the stuff over there. So we can fix that 
by using a layer mask. Now if you're working with these as individual groups, you have to have an individual layer masks for these two. If you're working with, with a group, you can actually put a layer mask on the group. So it saves you a little bit of work. Same trick though. We have our foreground color, that's fine. Let's go back to our brush. I don't want the fade out on this one, so let's just choose a different brush. I'll choose the 100, that's pretty good. Looks good. Layer mask, and then just paint black in here straight down from where the building is. Now on this one, the ground or the water is already kind of a greenish color down here. It's already a nice green, so it matches in very nicely. This comes straight down right where that building is, leaving just this bit over here on the left-hand side. And there we go. There is our northern lights in behind this building. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit. And I'll float this picture out here so you can see it a bit better. There we go. As you can see, there's a lot of possibility in here for variation. You can make the northern lights brighter or darker. You can change the colors if you want to. A lot of artistic flexibility in this particular technique. Most northern lights have this kind of a greenish tint to them. It's kind of a streakiness. There's one last little bit of a touch-up I want to do on this at this point. I think these are still a bit too even up here. And there we can actually bring that down just a bit. Let's go back over here. Sometimes you need to do a larger image to really see what you're doing. So that's going to be this top one. That's right there. That layer. There's our layer mask. And we'll go back to our brush. I need to reset our brush settings. So let's just get this over out of the way right there. There's our brush settings. Change the brush settings here. Fade, we had that at 15. There's our fade out. And we had the opacity set at 30 for that. So let's just repeat all those settings. Okay, we can now do just a little bit more on that. I think I'm going to bring this in just a bit more up here. That's nicer, just a little bit more variation up there. Like that. And final thing over here, we have the kind of a, an edge showing. Let me go over here to the different tool. Right there, a little bit of an edge showing here. That's you know, you may or may not like that. It's personal choice on that one, and that's going to be on the same layer on the image side of that. So double click, look for that light blue outline on that image side. And then grabbing this tool here, this is the smudge tool. You can come in and you can just pull straight up like that and follow along the directions of the northern lights, actually blurring that or smearing that up a little bit to help break up that edge. So we're not seeing a hard edge right there, just a little bit of a breaking up and adding a bit more randomness again into the image. And that looks pretty good. All right, there we go. There is the northern lights added into this photograph. Let's take a look at the before and after on this. Let me readjust my size a bit so I can see our tools. I'll come over here and grab that original background. Actually, I'll grab this background here. That's fine. Make a new layer from that. Pull that clear to the top. So there it is, there's the original, and there it is with our northern lights. Okay, adding northern lights into a photograph. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.